You're probably drowning in AI news right now. Every day there's a new announcement, a new model, a new feature. And honestly, most of it doesn't matter. I spent hours this week digging through the noise so you don't have to. And here's what surprised me. This week's updates aren't just incremental. Some of these changes are going to reshape how you work in 2025. Welcome back to bitbiased.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts with our free weekly newsletter. Click the link in the description below to subscribe. You will get the key AI news, tools, and learning resources to stay ahead. So in this video, I'm breaking down the seven biggest AI stories of the week, the ones that actually affect you. We're talking GPT 5.2's ridiculous new benchmarks, Adobe literally dropping Photoshop inside ChatGPT for free, and a browser from Google that might change how we use the internet. By the end, you'll know exactly what's worth your attention and what's just hype. Let's start with the one that has the entire AI community talking. Story 1. OpenAI's GPT 5.2 beats humans, again. OpenAI just dropped GPT 5.2, and this one's different. Instead of giving us a single massive model, they've released three specialized variants. And the strategy here is actually pretty smart. You've got GPT 5.2 instant for your quick, everyday questions. Then there's GPT 5.2. Thinking for the heavy lifting, coding, planning, complex problem solving. And finally, GPT 5.2 Pro for enterprise grade, mission critical tasks. But here's where it gets interesting GPT 5.2. Thinking matched or outperformed human experts 70.9% of the time on knowledge work evaluations. And it's running 11 times faster than previous comparable systems. That combination, smarter and faster, is exactly what we've been waiting for. The improvements in long context reasoning, structured outputs, and multi-step decision making make this genuinely useful for developers, researchers, analysts, and content creators. OpenAI isn't positioning this as some experimental breakthrough, they're calling it production ready. And honestly, based on what we're seeing, they might be right. Story two, Adobe drops Photoshop directly into ChatGPT. Now this next one caught me off guard. Adobe has officially brought Photoshop, Adobe Express, and Acrobat directly into ChatGPT. And here's the kicker. They're free to use. Think about what that means. You can now type, remove the background from this photo, or clean up this PDF directly in ChatGPT, and Adobe's professional tools load right there in the chat window. No separate apps. No subscription required for basic use. No learning curve. Tasks that used to require navigating complex menus, applying filters, generating effects, manipulating PDFs, can now happen through natural language. This is massive for anyone who's ever felt intimidated by creative software. The integration works on ChatGPT for web, desktop, and iOS, with Android coming soon. Adobe's clearly betting that the future of creative tools is conversational and by embedding themselves inside one of the world's most used AI assistants, they've just given millions of people frictionless access to their ecosystem. Story three, Claude trains 30,000 Accenture consultants. Anthropic just locked in a partnership that's going to turn heads. They're teaming up with Accenture to bring Claude and Claude code into enterprise workflows at massive scale. And when I say massive, I mean Accenture is creating an entire dedicated business group around Claude. Over 30,000 consultants are being trained in Claude-powered workflows, code generation, system debugging, documentation automation, enterprise knowledge retrieval. Here's a number that stood out. Claude code already accounts for over 50% of usage among large company AI coding assistants. That's not a pilot program. That's real adoption. For Anthropic, this is a major enterprise win against ChatGPT Enterprise and Gemini for Workspace. But for everyone watching, this signals something bigger. Consulting giants are building entire AI divisions around specific models. The battle for enterprise AI isn't just about features anymore. It's about ecosystems. Story 4. Google Disco turns tabs into apps. Wait until you see this one. Google Labs just introduced Disco an experimental AI-infused browser that completely reimagines how we interact with the web. 
Instead of traditional tabs, Disco uses something called Gen Tabs, powered by Gemini 3. These dynamically turn web content into interactive mini applications. So instead of opening 10 tabs to research a trip, you ask questions, compare information, and complete tasks directly in the browser, without hopping between sites. The browser adapts in real time. It summarizes content, generates tools on the fly, and responds to follow-up questions using context from across the web. Browsing becomes less about clicking links and more about getting outcomes. Disco is still experimental and requires a waitlist, but it signals where Google thinks the web is heading. Browsers as intelligent assistants, not passive gateways. If this works, it could blur the line between websites, apps, and AI agents entirely. Beyond headlines, and. All right, rapid fire time. Three stories you need to know about but don't need the deep dive. Story five, OpenAI poaches, Slack CEO. OpenAI just hired Denise Dresser, former CEO of Slack, as their new chief revenue officer. She led Slack through its $27.7 billion acquisition by Salesforce. So this is a serious operator joining the team. The timing makes sense. OpenAI hit $4.3 billion in revenue in the first half of 2025 and just crossed 1 million enterprise customers. They're not just building AI anymore. They're building a Fortune 500 company. Story 6. DeepSeek allegedly smuggles NVIDIA chips. This one's geopolitically significant. Chinese AI startup DeepSeek is reportedly training its next-gen model using NVIDIA Blackwell chips, which are banned from export to China under U.S. regulations. Reports suggest the hardware may have come through third-country smuggling networks. NVIDIA denies seeing verified evidence, but this highlights how critical advanced chips have become in the global AI race. The enforcement of export controls is becoming a very real question. Story 7. Zoom Aces AI Reasoning Exam Here's one that flew under the radar. Zoom just scored 48.1% on humanity's last exam, one of the hardest AI reasoning benchmarks out there. That beats Google Gemini 3 Pro's previous best of 45.8%. This powers Zoom's upcoming AI Companion 3.0, focused on practical workplace impact, meeting summaries, decision support, workflow automation. Zoom's quietly positioning itself as a serious enterprise AI competitor, not just a video call app. And that's your AI news for the week. If any of these stories surprised you, or you want me to go deeper on something specific, drop a comment below. Subscribe if you want to stay ahead of what's actually happening in AI, not just the headlines. I'll see you in the next one.